What's going on guys, Vic be back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to be looking at some LED mods for Toy Story 4 limited edition users. These mods are cheap, easy as hell to do if you know how to solder, and honestly they are a must in my opinion. Now, it's a beautiful machine. Let's take a look. All right, guys, you know Joe, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. Be sure also, I gotta, I do this now because it's animation I have. And it's, 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 yes, be sure to like and subscribe and comment and I don't really care about the bell, <laughs> but it's in the animation. Again, be sure to follow me on all the socials. You would see everything. Again, yes, I do know I'm going heavy on like pinball videos i'm loving the hell out of these machines i'm still doing my arcade builds obviously and v-pin builds and all that so i know i'm going heavy and hard on pinball but don't worry there's only a couple more videos to come out because i'm loving these machines i think that you if you do have a toy story 4 limited edition you will definitely want to do these mods i'm just enjoying it so again why are you not following me be sure to follow me on all the socials again the socials i post stories and it's like live and it's like you know in the heat of the moment you don't have to wait a week for a video to come out to watch me, so be sure to follow. What are you waiting for? It's there. Click the link tree. <laughs> now to my OG subscribers, yes, you're going to always hear my social media plug. It's kind of a quick minute, so yes, just get used to it. But on this one today, we're going to be focusing on a couple of LED mods that honestly, once I got this machine in, I noticed one big thing, and especially because I do have a collector's edition Godfather. Uh, I noticed one big thing, and it is the lack of LEDs as far as under the cabinet and in the rear. Then I took it another step further, and I even looked into the back glass kind of LEDs here. So again, on this one today, let me show you the LEDs. Let's take a look at exactly what I did. And honestly, this is a very cheap way to get this done. I'm not here to bash companies. I'm not here to badmouth people, but... There are like one or two companies that are offering an LED kit for this. It is ridiculous, the price on it. I think it was like 120 bucks or 140 bucks just for this LED kit. And if you're like me, or I'm pretty sure everybody has like LEDs lying around in their house, you could get this done for little to zero money. Me personally, I did have these LEDs lying around, so this costed me nothing. But as far as the addressable LEDs, I got a great deal on Amazon. It was like 30 bucks. In total, if I had to pay for these LEDs, you're probably looking at in total a $50 mod. Whereas other companies are charging 120 bucks just for this here. I think it's I think it's atrocious. So again, let's take a look at the mods. I'll tell you why I did this mod, especially compared to the the Godfather Collector's Edition mod. I got a lot to talk about. Let's first take a look at what the hell I'm talking about. Now, if you've been watching my stuff and you've seen all my videos, you would know that I am, yes, a proud owner of two brand new inbox Jersey Jack pinball machines. Godfather hit three weeks old. Toy Story 4 has hit two weeks old. I just looked at the video. I've been enjoying the hell out of my pins. They are loads of fun. I am having an insane amount of fun, especially with also the family and the kiddo. The kiddo loves like when it's time to take a picture. It's, it's insanity. So yes, I've been loving it. I've been playing these machines daily. If, I mean, on a minimum, I'm probably getting about an hour a day of play. Uh, you know, figure 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there. Usually, I kind of just play one game a day. Like, you know, if I only have an hour, I'll play just Toy Story. Um, but yes, I've been enjoying the hell out of my machines. The big reason why I did this mod is once I had these machines set, right now is a perfect example. Awesome. Godfather, again, this is a collector's edition. The Godfather attract mode, the LEDs are off right now, so you can at least see what the mod looks like without Godfather lighting on. I'm then also going to show you what it looks like with the Godfather lighting on and no Toy Story on it. So again, basically what happened is that I had these machines side by side, I'm playing it, but every time I kept looking at Toy Story, it just, it was dark. It's just dark here. And, you know, I, I have my personal opinion on this. I believe Jersey Jack should have just included LEDs like they have on the collector's edition. They should have just included it. Again, you can see it now again. Godfather, attract mode, LEDs are off. The I'm talking about the LEDs under the cabinet and in the rear. 
You can see, like, right now, Godfather, how it's dark, that's what it looked like for Toy Story. It just didn't look good. I, I, it kind of annoyed me. It was a weird bug I had. I was like, this is just annoying to me. So, I knew I had to brighten this thing up. It is a carnival-style game. You need lights. So, the first thing I did, I looked up, how am I going to get this thing to light up? Now, real quick, I moved you to where I would normally stand. Not really normally stand, but I moved you in front of Godfather, basically. This way, you can kind of see how Toy Story looks. Again, it's just, there's a void. And then not to mention, like, the LEDs here are bouncing off of here, which looks great. But it just, it, it looked like the Godfather was, like, the king. And Toy Story was just, like, on the side. So, I just had to match it. Uh, again, I'm going to go through the mod. I'll even post down below the actual... LED strip I bought great LED strip again. It was actually 60 feet I didn't realize how long it was but on the top I look at the price and no joke. It was 25 bucks uh, It's a no-brainer. So I'm gonna now put my LEDs back on on Toy Story and I am able to use it on the phone. I could do a whole bunch of different patterns I have it right now set to random so it's got you know rainbow effect and the biggest thing is that it does have the chase only downside, yes, this does not speak to the game. Um, I was going to go to that next level and try to get it wired up with the hot rails in the game. I'm no expert with LEDs, but I had my experience with LEDs. I really didn't want to touch that because if you know LEDs and especially addressable LEDs, you know, basically the computer knows how many LEDs there are. Let's just say there's 50 LEDs on the left channel, the left hot rail. If I were to add LEDs, let's say I added 100, I might now screw around with the game. And I just said, you know what? Godfather, yes, it communicates. It's all in sync. It looks great. But at least for a theme like Toy Story, it doesn't really matter that much. So it is kind of random. But my main objective was to just get this thing glowing. And now, now it looks great. And I said the other mod that I did was this backlash. The camera, I'm not playing any tricks. Yes, that is what the back glass looks like. It looks beautiful. They basically included, I even have it upstairs, I think. They had one single LED strip right here, and it was kind of like a tannish color. Um, I had RGB strip laying around, so it's basically a four channel LED strip, basic thing. And look at it now. I think it looks awesome. You know, I don't want to say the word, you know, I don't want to keep emphasizing awesome, but this looks beautiful. I am a fan of cool white. I like cool white. I don't like that brown, yellowish, like, I don't like, like, especially when it's like house LEDs. Like, my lighting in here is like cool white. I don't do like the halogen tan, whatever it is, 4500 Kelvin. This looks awesome. So the first thing I did, and I'll, I'll definitely go through it. I'll, I'll definitely post some pictures. I'll, I'll put like uh, B-roll pictures. First, when I was doing this, I only swapped out the LED on top. When I did that, this looked awesome, but this was dark. Then I took a look at Godfather. Godfather looks amazing. I, I love the backlights on Godfather, but if you actually open up Godfather, they have LEDs around the actual screen. So I had LEDs lying around. I basically have two separate kind of LED strips going on. I have one LED strip right here, and I'm going to open up the back glass, don't worry. And now I have a separate LED strip that is actually around the screen. One big thing, yes, I put it. I did a quick test. I actually loaded up the camera. I actually had some issues with my camera because there was an LED directly over it. With some quick electrical tape, I no longer have that issue. And not to mention, in this game, Toy Story 4, there is an LED that's behind Forky. I'll be honest, I have yet to see that LED turn on. I should really rephrase that. Um, I don't look here <laughs> when I'm playing. So I know there's a part where you have to save fork. I'm, I'm assuming that's when that LED turns on. Uh, but I do have the LED blocked out. So right here I have about four LEDs that are actually covered in electrical tape. So that's why you kind of see it here. I could go one more and take out like Forky's eye here. but. So far, with all the games I've played on this, I have not looked up there at Forky to see a blinking light. But, yes, it, the camera is not playing tricks. That is now what the back glass looks like. It looks gorgeous. Compared to Side by Side on The Godfather, this was just brown. It had a brown look to it. I was like, that looks, it looked ugly. I didn't like it. Now, look at the logo on Toy Story 4. 
That thing is popping. I love it. Now, let's take a look at the actual mod and let me show you guys what we did. Let's do the back glass mod because I feel like honestly that's a very, I'm going to say the word very easy because I know how to solder. Um, but basically when we get to the adjustable LEDs, I did have to drill a hole into the actual cabinet. But let's not jump the gun just yet. My toy store, I have to kind of give it a little force here. But get ready to be blinded by the light. Here we go. Awesome. So I looked at the camera. There's no real major glare to it. I'm going to remove right now the screen. And just to show you that, yes, as you can see, just like the Godfather, it's not exactly like Godfather. Godfather's LEDs here are actually pointing outward. It's kind of like an actual little lip that's pointing out. But as you can see, my LEDs here, they're not connected to this. So it's two different strips. And yes, it goes with the screen. I would rather focus on this one here first. I'm going to tell you the exact steps because basically I modded this first and then the screen mod came into play because I realized that the sides and the bottom were not it wasn't glowing like I wanted to. So again, when you open up your back glass, you're gonna see a single LED strip here. There's gonna be a blue wire, it's two blue wires right here. There's an actual connection on the left side. Basically what I did is that I pulled off the old LEDs. There's actually metal clips here that's kind of holding it in place. You have about a 99% chance that you are gonna break the LED that is originally here. It's only because it's like so adhered um, it's gonna most likely rip. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Again, I removed the old, and basically what I did is that I replaced it with an RGB strip. So this strip right here has four pads. I'll talk about it in a second, okay? I basically just kind of swapped this top out. I put the glass back on, and I noticed that it didn't give me a full effect, especially the sides. I took it a step further, and I added the kind of wall, like the sidewall LEDs here. Uh, basically, and I took it another step further, I have LEDs going back towards the rear of the cabinet, so I have an LED here. All in all, it's one single LED strip. If you don't know LEDs, you, you understand that you basically just cut it wherever there's a copper kind of connection. So to show you my mod, I do have, yes, the stock original blue wires. They're right here on the left, just like where they were. Instead of them here, I basically have it underneath here. And again, when you do have, when you are going to do it, you could actually remove it with the clip. So this blue wire that's here, you could go take it to your shop, solder, and go. Now basically, once you disconnect it, you could bring it to your shop, you know, do your soldering. Again, I didn't measure the, this actual connection is kind of a pain in the ass, but once you get it lined up, it's pretty tight. There you go. Basically, what I did is I soldered the two wires. And I bought the whole reel, figure like I had like, I don't know, five feet in my hand. I then basically connected, I put it in, and then I cut the pads. If you know LEDs, it's basically, you know, this, the copper pads where you solder, that's actually your cut point. So don't do it where you kind of measure. I'm just the type where I had the reel in my hand, and I said, okay, I need this much, boom. Now keep in mind with what I did, especially going to the rear, if I have to remove this metal housing, yes, I have to come over here and pull back this LED strip here. You don't have to go in the rear, but I was the type at this moment, I was like, oh, maybe if I have LEDs pointing downwards, it'll illuminate the sides. It kind of helps, but in all honesty, that's where the screen mod comes in. So definitely, if you know soldering, you have your stock wiring right there. That is super easy. If you can't do this, I don't know if you could do the rest, <laughs> meaning the screen mod, but that right there, that's easy. Now let's talk about the screen mod. Now let's talk about the screen mod. If you're able to do this, you're most likely able to do the screen mod. Granted though, yes, on my mod, I do have a Molex connector here. Uh, you don't really need the Molex connector. I'm the type of person where I wanted to keep it clean uh, in case, I don't know, if you ever have to take the screen off, you have the disconnects like it has here. Uh, but let's go through the basics. I have basically a Molex connector connected to LED strip. I did the same exact thing. As you can see though, I do have this red and black power wire that I had lying around because, you know, the start of the LED to where the power is, it's kind of long, not to mention this is on an arm, so you want to give it that length. Um, before anything though, this male Molex connector is already in your back box. This is already here. I didn't add this. This is already here. If you didn't want to go the Molex connector route, 
You could essentially cut this here and then kind of solder and wire the power wires. I just wanted to keep it basic. This Molex connector I have here, and again, I do arcade builds and I have so many PCs lying around. This is actually coming from an old Mega Touch I had in the garage. So basically I cut the Molex connector and I soldered in some wire. I knew I needed about, I don't know, that's like what? A foot and a half of wire. And then I started my LEDs. Again, to keep it clean, I would recommend doing the Molex. And again, I'm pretty sure you have a Molex connector lying around. Now, essentially I did the same thing I did here. I wired my wires and then I had about, let's say a five foot roll of LEDs in my hand. Definitely I would recommend I started at the top. I did it from the top because I knew I had this wire here. If I did it from the bottom, it might interfere with the camera. So you definitely want to start from the top. And basically I just went along the edge. So as you can see, this is firing upwards, which is okay. The main thing though is the sides here. I didn't do any modifying to the frame. The sides here is already there. So you can kind of see the LEDs are pointing outwards to the player. When I got underneath, I did basically a fold. The LED is now pointing downwards, comes back up here, it's pointing outwards to the player, and then back up to the top. And I met right here in the middle. Wherever I could cut, I cut it, and then that was it. This mod is done. So again, as you can see, I could move the screen around. Some people might say, hey Vic, can I just like connect the strip from here to there? You can, but you're gonna have like excess LEDs. You're not gonna have the freedom like I do here. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but basically, once that was done, I then put the whole thing back inside. So I'm going to just move my arm and we push in using the frame. Boom, boom. Awesome. As you can see, in. No issues at all. I put the glass back on. It looked amazing. I went to go play a game. I had to take a picture and then all of a sudden my picture was just white. That's when I discovered I needed to put some electrical tape right here. So as you can see, I have no, it's one, two, three, no, that's a little one. Oh, uh, let's see, one, two, three, three LEDs I had to cover with electrical tape right over the camera. This is the forky LED I was talking about. I could cover it one more. You can always grab electrical tape. It's not that big of a deal. I'll probably cover it now so you can kind of see it before and after. And yes, that's probably all you have to do. Be sure you cover these LEDs. You don't have to go in and then cut this LED and then make a wire that's so complex. You're not too tired anytime. I'm not tired. Godfather, I'm not tired. And that's it. Mod done. So again, after a little bit of trial and error, this is the final result. Boom. Love it. Looks awesome. Honestly, I covered the LED by 4K. I can still see 4K. It's not that big of a deal. It didn't change much. But as you can see, a thousand times better. Me shooting it on video just to explain it, it's much easier. I want to make sure I was recording. It's much easier uh, to do it this way. Just take my advice. Again, if you think about it, how the steps I did, uh, I'll even most likely show, like I'm pretty sure I took pictures, I'll show it again. Uh, but basically like I said, I just had this row lit. So like Buzz's arm here wasn't lit up. It, it, it looked half-assed and again, the big thing is the sides and the bottom. It looks great now. Again, I'm gonna show you in the garage the actual LED strip I used and uh, how you could do it. Now, let's talk about the adjustable LEDs. Now, I'll be brutally honest, when it comes to this adjustable LED mod, yes, I took a drill to this cabinet. I made one hole. I made one hole in the bottom of the cabinet. That is all it is. You could possibly do this without making the hole. Um, seeing how, for example, how Godfather is and Toy Story does have it, in the rear, there's two holes with this kind of metal grating. Um, you could utilize them. I just feel like it's so much extra wiring. I think it's just so much easier to drill a hole right in the middle of the cabinet. I went very close to the front and then right in the middle of the cabinet, that's all you need. Inside a toy store on the right side in the coin door, there's an actual power plug here. Now keep in mind with this mod, this power plug is always on. It's always on 24 seven. As long as you have your machine plugged in, that power plug, that power outlet always has power. Vic, what does that mean? Basically, if I turn off my cabinet, my LEDs are still on. Luckily though, with the kit that I bought, it came with this remote and you can use it from your phone. You could set timers. 
if you want to do it that way and kind of set it and forget it. Or I could just come here, turn it off. Usually when I do put it on, I push the power button on and that's it with a remote. Can't complain. So yes, keep in mind for this mod, I did drill a hole and the power I'm using is on 24 seven. So keeping the remote handy works. You can leave it on if you're the type to leave your LEDs on, but I don't like doing that. But yes, let me show you the mod. So I got the basement lights on. I just want to show you, I removed the coin box just to show you exactly what it looks like here because it doesn't interfere at all with stock stuff. Again, the one I'm going to link you to, it does have a fairly big brick, but it does clear the coin door. And as you can see, there is your power supply there. Again, it's your regular outlet. So you could come here and put the plug in and good to go. Again, the coin box is within this kind of batten here, so it doesn't interfere. Now, the way this works or it's wired, you can see there that there's this barrel connector here that's going to the LEDs. There's this kind of controller. So even if you don't have the remote, you could power on and off here. But basically, this is going to the LED strip. I'm gonna try to put you in, and you could kinda see, I'm gonna grab my flashlight most likely. You could kinda see, but basically, I have one connection, it's through a hole, and it actually splits out. So you can see there, this is the hole I made. So it's one wire, one wire, splits out to two separate strips. That's how adjustable LEDs work. Basically, you know, the beginning of the strip, this is LED one, two, three. As long as you start in the beginning, then you could, you know, mimic it. I have two strips that it thinks it's one strip basically. So again, it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's the LED count. So again, you do need to know soldering for this, but as you can see in the middle, and then it splits out. So when it does the chase, they all start and it kind of is in sync. Again, the strip I got, it's only got one wire. You might be able to find the strip that has two outs, two wires out. That might be easier for you if you don't know how to solder. But for 25 bucks, and I know how to solder, I'm not gonna complain. Not to mention, look at how much extra LED I have. It was 64 feet of LEDs. So again, I have LEDs that come right here. They split out right in the front. They go straight to the back. They come up the entire rear and they actually come forward. You can see it there. I have them coming forward and then angles out because I do plan to put toys up there. I'll tell you my little journey with the toys. Unfortunately, they don't fit. <laughs> my ceiling is too low. So I do have, yes, extra LEDs compared to the Godfather, I do have more LEDs right here, but that's because I plan to put like, you know, the figurines here. Uh, one quick note, I could show you, it's just, it's a little tight here, but you might be able to see, I hope you can see the LEDs that go along here. Now these LEDs, I actually don't have taped down. Just in case I have to drop the back box, they're free. I would have to just kind of loosen these LED strips and then the back box comes down. But let's be real, how often you're gonna drop the back box? But yes, this is now a perfect example of the chase sequence on why addressable LEDs are number one, awesome. And then number two, you understand the lighting effect here. So if I keep you here, as you can see, they're in sync. They're kind of shooting at the same pace. They're going the same way. That's where when it comes to this part here, this has to be LED one and you want it as, as close as possible to the other strip too. So it's one, two, three, four, five. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's LED one, two. So the computer is telling, hey, LED one is green, then shoot to two, and then LED one is off. That's that's how it works. That's how adjustable LEDs work. But as you can see, that's why I went in the middle here. Middle here branches out straight to the back and then up. So that's a perfect example to show you how adjustable LEDs work. Now again, my hole is right up against the front wall. I knew the coin door was here, the coin box, so it's not interfering at all. This kind of excess here just literally gets tucked to the side. Nothing going on there at all. So that gets tucked, and then I'm able to come here, take my coin box, and put it right back in. The coin box always, I need, usually need two hands for the coin box. I'll put my camera down. And yes, yeah, see, coin door is down coin box I should say and door latches so again it's not in the way you can see that you have a gap here 
Again, my LED is right here. It's not interfering. That's exactly why I put this hole as close as possible. Now, let's head to the garage. Let me give you a better visual on what I did with the LED strip. Look, the strip I got, it's 64 feet for $25. Addressable LED, keep that in mind. That's an insane price for adjustable LEDs and I have all this excess. <laughs> Let's take it to the garage. Let me show you exactly what I did as far as wiring. All right, so I brought you guys to the shop to show you the actual mod. Again, if you don't have any parts lying around, just save yourself the time and get regular white LEDs. Uh, basically, again, like I said, I have RGB strip for days lying around. Again, my strip though is RGB power. There's four copper pins here. Uh, again, I have this lying around, so I don't have to spend any money on it. If you don't have any parts, then just save your time. Be sure to get 12 volt LED strips. I like cool whites. You can kind of go on Amazon and look up cool white LED strips. Be sure that they are 12 volts. If you do 24 volts, it will not work. I had 24 volt white LEDs lying around somewhere and it didn't work. So be sure not to use 24 volt. Now again, if you get the regular cool whites, it's very simple. You take the old strip out of the cabinet. You should have it in your hand. There's a there's two blue wires, but one is solid blue and one is blue purple. Um, I don't really remember right now. You just have to make sure. Take a look at the existing pin out before you pull it out. Basically on the strip, you're gonna see 12 volt and then G. You're just gonna mimic it, resolder it and such. Uh, you may not even need to solder it, um, you know, usually new strips come with like a connector. You might just have to con you know, cut the connector and then, you know, put the wires together. I'm the type that I do like to solder to keep it a strong, you know, connection. And I also like to use these shrink rack tubings. This way nothing gets kind of uh, sparked or caught or touching. Uh, so yeah, if you have, if you're getting a new strip, easy stuff. If you're like me and you have RGB strip laying around, I'll show you the trick. Basically, your RGB strip has a 12 volt and an RGB pad. So there's four pads here. All I simply did is that I took solder and I made RGB one connection. I basically made it one pad. I connected three pads and I made it one. So I'll show you what I mean. So as you can see here, I have my four pads. I'm gonna now take my soldering iron. I got my solder. I'm gonna start off with the RGB. So let's fill that pad. We fill that pad and we fill that pad. So as you can see, like that right there, the G and the B are already connected via solder. So you just gotta add extra solder and then bring the G in. You basically, there you go, boom. So that right there, RGB is connected in. Like I said before, RGB together on makes white. Um, I don't have the blue wire, but I'm gonna use this as an example. Now I don't have the blue, so I'll use this red and black wire that I have. Basically you're gonna take it, cut a little end off of it. And you're basically gonna put some solder on both of the ends here. My black is a little long, so I most likely will cut that. But you basically wanna put some solder on these ends here. Again, I don't remember what the blue wire pinout was, but basically right now, I'm gonna be doing the black wire is gonna to go to these RGBs. So I could even use this wire here to make sure everything's still connected. So that right there is soldered. I have to put some solder on my 12 volt now. Make sure these don't touch. And now I'm gonna take the other end of the blue and done. That is it. That is what it looks like right there. So again, RGB solder together to one wire and then your power. And like I said, take this strip with you to the back glass and mount it. Now, just to show you, I do have a 12 volt power supply. I'm gonna basically just use this kind of black and red. And if I give the connection here, as you can see, there is the white. If you touch this and it's not white, let's say it's like green or red, that means then your pads here are not soldered together correctly. But as you can see, there is my white. That is exactly what's coming from the cabinet. Think of this as the blue and the blue purple. And one, two, three you will get the connection like that. Again, I'm not getting it good because I'm not holding the wire correctly, but there you go. That's it, basics. All right, now we're gonna do a tutorial for the addressable LEDs. Unfortunately, I don't have a new reel 
uh, to show you, but this is the actual strip that I have. Again, it's 64 feet. It's really two reels, but they made it into one huge reel. Um, but basically, I'm going to show you the end of this. You are going to need wire for this. Uh, I do recommend probably 18. No, not 18. I would recommend 20 or 22 gauge wire for this. 18 might be just a little bit too big, but you could still get to work with 18. But basically, let me just see if you could see this. I don't know. I might have to zoom in on, on post. But you can see here, there's basically four pins here. There's four copper pads, but it's only three wires. You have a ground. There's a D1 and then V plus. So the big thing, the, the way to start this, the best way is when you get your reel, I'm going to try to get an existing one like this. When you first get your reel, it's going to have this connection here and it's going to have the shrink tubing here. Slice this tubing. Don't cut the wire. Slice the tubing open like this. And find the colors. Be sure colors matter. So I'm pretty sure I think on my on this set it was um, blue, red, and black. Blue is most likely like the data in. Red is most likely power in, and then black is most likely the ground. But don't go by my voice. You have to actually physically see it. Also, be sure to see on the first pin, especially because it's addressable LEDs. You might actually see D0. I'm gonna actually zoom in on this. So you could actually see here, see there's D0 on the left and then D1. So this matters here. Basically, I believe you're going to see probably D1. Uh, it's, it's basically the way the, the LEDs are going. So be sure all this matters. You right now are trying to figure out how it is stock. Now again, I don't have the strip here. It's already done. But here's what we're basically going to be doing, okay? I can't stress it enough. You're going to want to... You know, make sure this is the main important key here because this is what tells you where it's starting from. This is very long strip. What I did, no joke, I unraveled the whole entire thing. I matched up the wire and then I cut it in half. Yes, I urge you to do that. I don't really know how many feet completed that cabinet, but you already have 64 feet. Take it, make sure it's equal when you go down the line, make sure it's equal, and then you cut it down the middle. You basically want to make sure that this, if, if it's, let's just say it's D1, you're going to want to make sure that the other end, again, we're merging two strips together, you're going to want to make sure the other end starts with D1 as well. If you have D1 and then the other one is D0, you're going to have a bad time. This, this is not going to work. So you want to make sure everything is right. So as you can see here, like I have here D1 and D1. Now you're going to desolder. You're going to remove the existing connector here. Or you could just go to the next LED and cut it if you want to just keep it like that. But basically what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be putting two sets of wires. Kind of like that. You know, two sets. One strip. It's going to be just like this. We're going to go one strip and then one strip like this. And then these doesn't need a connector. You could have bare wire. You're now going to solder in that connection that you just desoldered. I know I, I, for me, it's easy to understand, but I'm trying to explain it to you guys. Basically, again, what I'm doing, I have D1 here. You're going to solder three wires like this. So this, let's pretend this is soldered now. I'm going to take the strip that we cut in half. Again, being sure that I start with D1 or whatever that is. Again, I'm just, I, I'm using D1 as the example. I take now the second strip. I solder it the same exact way, being sure the colors are the right. And now I have my two separate LED strips. That's what I'm trying to get out here. Now again, your wires are not going to have a connection. You don't need this connection here. It should actually be bare. So it might really kind of look like this. Again, I don't want to cut my existing connectors. These I use for, for pinball. But as you can see, it should look like this. Now you could take the original wire that was coming from the actual strip. You're going to cut it, splice it, and then you're going to basically merge all these together. So you're going to have basically red and red. So you're going to put these together. And then the wire that's kind of, that originally was attached to the strip. So you're going to have three pairs of wires. That is it. That's how this should look. So basically there's going to be communication in, and then it splits out to the two strips. That's really it. I can't really explain it that much easier, but there you go. While we're at it, let me just show you real quick the included toys that came with the machine. I'll show you where I put mine. So you do have Jesse, 
I have a right there. People do it their own way. Again, these came in included. So Jesse is right here, basically right where the spinner is, making sure nothing you know interacts with the ball. So she's pretty clear. I do have Gabby Gabby back here. Again, she fit pretty well, honestly. She kind of fit perfectly, especially with her dress just kind of missing the frame there. The biggest one that I love is Duke Kaboom. So I got Duke Kaboom right here, trying to mimic how people have him. Yes, the pinball does clear his foot. Uh, as you can see there, you can kind of see how like the maple leaf. The only thing, honestly, I did to Duke Kaboom, I bent him forward a little bit, and then I did also cut a tiny bit. You can't even tell. I cut a tiny bit of his rear mufflers that are like red. I gave them a little cut. But as far as the toys, you can kind of see that. So again, if I do a full plunge, it does clear Duke Kaboom. So awesome. I was definitely very happy with that. As far as how they're stuck, just to show you again, let's let the ball go through again. Again, pinball clears Duke Kaboom's foot. No problem, I'll plunge again. Boom, look at that. Awesome, that was a very big trial and error thing. You wanna make sure it doesn't hit his foot. As far as how I got them stuck on, you could use like your regular double-sided tape, honestly. This stuff I have is like super strong 3M. But, uh, you know, I basically put it on the base and then I cut it. You can kind of see like the little bit of edging on Jesse. You could definitely see it on Duke Boom's Canadian flag. I basically try to cut it as close as possible, but that's how they're held in. So far, I've played this so many times, they haven't fallen, the ball hasn't hit them. And uh, yeah, I think it's awesome. You're gonna see the video coming up with the Godfather top where you could already see the mod right here. I have a lot to discuss with that. There's so much hate. It's unbelievable, but people do not understand my ceiling height. I have no joke. Luckily, I found these on Marketplace for free. I have two full-size woodies just to show you They don't fit. <laughs> they do not fit. I mean, I have to kind of squish him down. This is the second one I found. People just don't understand how low my ceiling is. Uh, but again, I'm trying to find toys up here and it looks like I, I, I can't do it. Not to mention like the Buzz Lightyear I have. This is a great Buzz Lightyear with like the wings blinking. Even if I put him at a seated position, which honestly, these just can't sit. Not to mention his legs go outwards. He does not fit. My ceiling is low, people. Stop hating. <laughs> My ceiling is low. Not to mention, uh, again, I found all this luckily for free, so I didn't pay anything at like these garage sales. That people, I even have small ones. <laughs> Look, this doesn't fit. He does not fit. Uh, this one, if I sit him, it's just, I don't like how they look seated. They don't look that great. <laughs> Not to mention, see Buzz Lightyear falls back and you don't see his head. <laughs> we got a, a Woody. Again, I'm not, I'm not, luckily I didn't spend any money on this and the kiddo is going crazy with her brand new Buzz Lightyears and Woody dolls. Uh, but this Woody doll that came with it, it's kind of weird. Like it's got a big ass lasso. It just, it's cool. But like this lasso thing is ugly as hell. Not to mention it kind of like fires it. I don't, I don't know. But yes, that is the dilemma I have. Wait until you see the top of video to the Godfather. But on that note, there you guys have it. That is exactly why I put the LEDs in front. This way it illuminates him like that. But yes, on that note, there you have it. Some honestly cheap, this is probably the best way to say it is easy. It's, it's easy LED mods, not to mention it's affordable and cheap you might be able to knock these mods out with stuff that you have lying around like i did except for the addressable leds but you know for somebody to pay like 120 bucks you mixed up in the family business for somebody to pay 120 bucks just for this with no joke like a 15 dollar led strip i think it's crazy but there you guys have it vig vp game case arcades if you don't want to do this you can reach out to me and i'd be more than happy to offer a mod service um yeah you let me know enjoy your pin now this is looking like a carnival themed cabinet change